You're listening to the OK Dad podcast. Please leave your message for Oh, oh Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Okay, Daddy. OK Dad podcast. Let's start this thing. Can you not put that on YouTube? You're listening to my husband talk a lot. Hey, what's going on, Lee? No. Not a lot, apart from it's very late here. <laughs> oh, I, I am sorry about that. Well, you can't control the time zones, but uh, no, no, it's, it's good. And it, it's good to eventually meet and have a chat. Oh, definitely. 100%. Where, where are you at right now, Lee? Um, so I'm in the, the United Kingdom, uh, a little town called Whitchurch, which is in between Liverpool, Manchester and Birmingham. Oh, uh, Wales. okay. Okay. Is that where you're from originally? No, no. Originally, I'm from Birmingham. Um, I grew up on a, a, a housing estate and uh, and joined the army at sixteen, and then never went back. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, well, growing up, let's uh, let's just start. Let's get into it now. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. sounds good. Um, growing up, was it was it just you? Were you an only child? Were you, were your parents together? Like, how was your childhood growing up? So I, I must admit, I had a, a wonderful childhood um loving parents mom and dad um i was an only child and I, my, my parents had me late my mom wasn't supposed to have children um some some medical problem but uh i turned up so uh she always went i was a miracle baby but uh oh yeah but yeah no it's really good um my, my parents when i was the age of five went into pubs into to bars um, and ran bars till 14 um, and then uh, left and my dad was a, a truck driver and my mom worked in a factory oh, okay okay so with your with your father being a truck driver was he was he around a lot or did that cause him to yeah. to kind of be away for some time no no he didn't do tramping um so what he'd do is he'd be up at two o'clock in the morning to miss the traffic in the UK um, mm. in his truck and, and he'd be back for a, for lunchtime. So he'd be there. He used to cook dinner for us. Oh, uh, my, okay. mom, my mom always used to say he was a better cook than her. So uh, yeah. he'd normally do dinner. So when you come home from school, you'd have a nice dinner laid out. So yeah, like I says, I had a, a brilliant childhood. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's really weird because you hear a lot of people going on about how they, how they had rough childhoods and, mm -hmm. and, and I really, I can't compare mine to, to that. It, it was a loving, they were together all their life. Um, they only passed away in 2018, um, yeah, three I'm months between. Oh, it, it, it was, uh, they had a good life together. So, yeah. uh, and, and that was the important thing really. Mm-hmm. I think I think you're right because there's a lot of people that are out there that that talk about their childhood, that the trauma that they face, and I don't think that that good childhoods get any kind of light when they are out there. You almost feel like you can't talk about it sometimes because you don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings. But I think when, when you're in a household like that, it's good to call it out and and kind of reminisce, even with friends and people who may not have had that, even with people who have had that, because. It kind of helps. Do you have any children, Lee? Yeah, yeah. So I've got uh, altogether five children. Um, um, I've got four boys and a, and a girl. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> when, I, when I say that, that so um, from, my first, from my first marriage, um, my, my, my first wife had two children when I met her. Um, and I took them on as my own and, and brought them up. And we had then my own biological son. And then my second wife, who I actually met in school, but we went our different ways. Mm -hmm. um, when we met, she'd got a son and daughter. So uh, I, I look at them all as my own. I don't, I don't, people say, oh, you know, they're stepdaughters. They're not real. At the end of the day, they're, they're, they're my family. Um, yeah, you're the father there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm father figure. Um, I've I've bought the younger one, the, well, the older ones up since we were th uh, three and five, um, and then then have been in my Laura and Jack's life since um, they were I think thirteen and seventeen. Okay, so you got your hands full. 
No, thankfully, the best thing about it is uh, they've all left home. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm also a grandson, uh, grand, grandson. Well, I have a grandson, but uh, I'm a, grand, a grandfather to, 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 uh, to two grandchildren, uh, two boys, um, and beautiful boys. And, and it's, it's the best thing about being a grandparent is that you can spend time with them and you don't have to parent them. Mm-hmm. So all the, the making sure they eat, making sure they clean. No, no, it's... I always said to my children that I was going to be the worst granddad ever because what I was going to do was fill them with hippies and coke and everything, shake them up and then send them back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, when, I send, when I send my son over to his grandmother's house, that's exactly how he comes back. Like, make sure he's not eating too much sugar. Make sure he's not eating too much of this. And he comes back and he's like, grandma gave me cookies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a grandparent's right. Um, oh, yeah. I saw, a, funnily enough, I saw a post and it just resonated with me because I, he'll, he'll get up, one, we have one over Kieran and he'll get up really early. So it's like, we'll sit there and I'll say, do you want some chocolate? And he goes, okay, okay yes, please, granddad. And then my wife comes out and goes, you do realise it's uh, six o'clock in the morning. You're not supposed to be giving him chocolate. No, it's okay. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah. Um, and and that and the, the, it was a uh, do parents when they become grandparents lose all parenting skills because they give they ch- give children sweets at any time of the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I remember when my kids started to grow up and get to the point to where they can like start to talk back and reason and understand communication. Um, seeing my father with my son who was two and he's trying to learn how to talk and he's talking and making words and I'm hard at hearing and he's talking and I can barely understand I'm trying to make an effort like okay this is what you want I can tell you want something and um, so my wife I don't know I don't know how she does it he would he would ramble something in his little toddler talk and she would know exactly what he's talking about oh he wants this from over there and she go gets it to gets it for him and so I was way worse than that. And I could maybe put together what he was talking about. So I would go and this, and it got to the point to where I would say, I know what you want, like point at it, point at it and show me. And he would eventually start to point. But then when it came to my father, so his grandfather, he, he would ramble some things. And, and my father was like, I have no idea what he's trying to say. I can't wait till he gets older. <laughs> like the, the effort of trying to listen is like, no, it, that's going to take so much effort. You know, let, let me just play around with him for, for, for the time being. So how old was he before he was, he was communicating and, and, you, and you, your dad sort I, of understood him? I think in between two to three is where he could communicate but he, we didn't have him in school at the time. So very early on, he didn't need to communicate with anybody because he, because me and his mother knew everything that he wanted. So he didn't, he didn't feel a a sense to, to speak or say anything. And uh, the doctors, we, you know, we take him in for his normal checkup. They were even saying, Hey, we should probably put him in some kind of speech therapy and whatnot. And you know, this is, this is my first, my, my stepdaughter, I met her when she was six. So my son from zero to six is brand new to me. So I'm being, I'm just going on instinct and I'm kind of like, well, you know, it, it feels like he's okay. I'm not sensing anything that's wrong with him. And uh, my wife was concerned at the time, but she wasn't super concerned and uh, our work schedules were just getting crazy. So she, she decided, Hey, let's go ahead and um, let's put him in daycare. And probably within the first month, he started talking like normal and we have not been able to get him to stop. So, Yeah. Really interesting. You say that because um, we we all learn at different paces. It doesn't matter who we are. And and, and saying that um, Daniel and Stephen, so Daniel was the oldest and then Stephen was the, the, the second eldest and, with Daniel being the oldest and Stephen coming along, Daniel started talking quite quickly um, to communicate. But when it came to Stephen, St- Stephen, no one could understand him. And yeah. he had to have grommets, but Daniel did. So he didn't have to learn to speak because Daniel would translate 
everything mm. that he wanted. So it's exactly the same. Yeah. And, and I think it's the fact that, as you said, if they're not, we, we can't gauge everybody by the same rule. Yeah. So we can't say everyone has yeah. to be talking this. Some people develop quickly. Some people develop a slower, but we all get there in the end. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's good that, you, and as you said, when they go to, to daycare and nursery, they have social interaction. And it's, mm-hmm. it's not just the speech. It's the whole thing. They've been able to dress themselves. and mm-hmm. it's, it's just like a, a snowball effect. They start off a little bit and it just just smashes through everything and oh, then they're yeah. grown up and go, oh my god where did yeah. all those years go <laughs> yeah we have a we have a newborn son who came along so he's six months old and Ooh. my son's about to be four and looking at him it's like those six months just went by and you're looking at him and then i look at my son who's four i'm like man he's gonna be this old in no time and you know we're gonna blink and we're trying not to miss any of those moments and they just happen so fast that they grow up. My daughter, like I said, I met her when she was six and now she's going to be 13 next year. So it's like, all oh, this is coming. It's coming. And I didn't want it to come this fast. So. Yeah. One of the things we can't do is stop time. And, yeah. uh, it, and, and as you say, it, it, it's about spending for me now. I, I, I was, um, I used to work away when, when my children grew up. Um, and in fact, I, I, I spoke to the eldest and says, look, I, I, I'm really sorry I didn't spend as much time with him. He says, Dad, you did. For him, it was computer games. And I'd, I'd come back at weekends and, and evenings and, and, and spend time with him playing computer games. And mm-hmm. but I'd always thought that I'd failed. And it's only when now they're older and think, well, maybe I could have spent more time with them. Mm-hmm. When I speak to them individually, they all say, "Well, you, you spent time with me as an individual as well as the family." So, it, yeah, it's a really hard one, I think. Yeah, I think I think good parents, or at least um, I call myself the the okay as dad, because I don't think I'm the best dad, but I don't, I definitely don't think I'm the worst dad. And and I think when when we're giving ourselves and we're we're that critical on ourselves, I think that that shows that you're giving effort. And the effort is what I believe that your kids need at that time. So if, if you're putting the best effort that you can, I, I think that they're going to be all right. And they're going to know that you're intentional with your love, with your care, with, with how you want to parent them. And they might not see it at that very moment. They, I, I think my daughter is going to see everything that I'm trying to do for her when she's well off into her twenties and maybe thirties, but I know right now she's not, she's not able to see any of it. And they, it, you know, it's hard as a parent. And I think some, some parents let that affect the way they communicate, the way they care for their kids. And, and when I see that, that's something that makes me sad when I see that because they're kids at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. So you put it funny you say that because teenagers are, are, are breed unto themselves and, and I, and, and so certainly in the UK, um, f- uh, you're, you're in school and from the age of like 13 through to 16, you have your exams at 16. And then you, at 13, 14, you have to select what you want to do, the, the, the courses and, that you do at school to do that's going to control the rest of your life. And I always think it's what a, stu- what a stupid time to actually be doing that because you're growing up, the hormones are, are whizzing through your body you, d- you don't know who, where, what, and when you're going to do. And then they're saying, well, you need to select the subjects that you, you want to do as a career. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think back to me, so um, I, I, I got out of my house at 16 and a half by joining the army. I had a, a great upbringing, really good family. Even though I was an only child, we had an extended family of my mom, my aunts and uncles and, and cousins. But also, as a teenager, I was not the easiest person to get on with. I was with mm. my parents. Um, and my dad never hit me, but if he raised his voice, I was gone. And, and, and I quaked. But I think now how, how I was. So I, when, when it came to the school thing, I just, I wouldn't say I flunked out. I was doing really well until the exams came. But you... you, you you just don't know what's in your mind and it changes literally 
minute by minute as a teenager. So it's it's a really hard thing. And it's only when you grow up. And I think yeah. it was 18, 19, when I looked back and went, oh, my God, I was really bad to my, my, my parents. Not mm-hmm. bad, bad, but I was like, I was quite disrespectful at times. Right. And it's only then when you look back and go, well, look what they did for me. Mm-hmm. You can you actually realization comes that they were doing their best, the same as you end up doing your best for your children. Yeah. Absolutely. That's 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 heavy because that I, what I've seen is there's a lot of people that that don't even do that reflection on what their parents did for them. And even bringing that up to, to our kids and our daughter, who's 12 going on 13, like we can definitely reason and, and give the old, like back in our day, we wouldn't be able to do this. Your grandmother wouldn't let us blah, blah, blah. And, and it's there, you know, that that's something that I'm always tempted to do um, because my father would always do that to me. I remember so vividly, no matter what it was on the news, I could be in the other room. I could be outside. My dad would, would yell at me to come, come here, come look, come look. And I'd go and I'm like, what's going on? He would show me the news and, and it would be somebody starving or somebody's dying in another country. And he would tell me, see how lucky you are. And I was like, yeah, no, I see. And then, so he's like, all right, go back to do doing whatever you were doing. And he did it. He did it so much that it, you know, it, it helped me. It did help me kind of realize, yeah, like I am lucky. We, we, we don't, we're not super well off, but we're, we weren't dirt poor. And he, he kept doing it to the point to where as I was in high school, he would still do that. He would still call me over, check this out, look at this. And it'd be the news or it'd be 60 minutes or something, some special on something that was going on. And it was losing its effect because that was the only way that he was able to kind of communicate that with me. And I try to make sure that me and my wife don't fall into that habit, that we're not using the same thing, because like you said, those hormones start coming, their bodies start changing. So you can't talk to them and their personality is going to start to, I wouldn't say change, but it's going to start to mature. So it's hard to Mm -hmm. talk to them the same way you would talk to them a year before, two years before. And that's what I'm seeing right now with my daughter, that the same things that made sense to her when I was telling her or giving her a lecture isn't working the same way. And uh, she's got she's got such such a heart of gold, her. And the other day it threw me off because she's she's never rude. She's never mean. And even then she wasn't rude or mean. But I'm telling her a story about something and um she was telling me a story and then I started telling her not to lecture on her story, but Hey, did you know that this is why um, that's bad? And she's like, Oh, okay. And I'm like, Cindy, <laughs> it's my daughter's name. Yeah. Cindy, don't just say, okay. Just because you don't want to talk to somebody about whatever it is that they're talking about. Cause she started doing that. Like if she doesn't want to talk to you, she, she'll just go, Oh, okay. <laughs> And I'm like, that's, that's a little mean. And that's also not like you right now. And that's, that was one of the first, okay. I would say top 10 things that I've been noticing as she's maturing, as those hormones are coming in and she's making her, her transition into a teenager. Yeah. Um, I think, as you said, it's actually thinking back to how we were. And, and, and the thing is you, you turn into your parents and when when I remember being told, oh, yeah. and you go, no, no, I'm never going to do that. Or I'm never going to say, mm-hmm. they'd say something. Gonna, as, 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 a, as, a, as a youth, you'd go, I'm, oh, that really annoys me. I'm never going to say that. And years gone, you go by, and then you're the you're the, the dad, and and you're going, wow, you really shouldn't be doing it. And you're halfway through it, and then you realise. Oh my dad, I'm saying exactly the same as my dad used to say. Oh my, and you, you stop yourself halfway through. And the kids just look at you going, You've stopped yeah. dad, why? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just walk away going, Oh no, I'm getting old. And but it's it's really hard. And, and like I says, and I, I've every sympathy with you because teenagers, and whether it's a boy or a girl, teenagers, they, they just do change. 
They mm. go from loving children to the devil incarnate, <laughs> but then they come out the other side. Oh, and this yeah. is a, and and no, it says if you think back to how, I don't think there's any anyone I've ever spoke to who said yet yeah, they were the perfect teenager. And some of the stories, as you say, you, you think about when, when in the years gone by, what we used to get up to. And now I was going to say that was the other thing is mm-hmm. we'd go to the kids. And like, yeah, you've, you've done this. Says, How do you know? Well, actually, I went through that. I did exactly the same as you've done. And I got caught as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Lee, when when you were growing up and and you went and left school, did you immediately join the army afterwards? Or yeah, I, I did about all. So I I decided I think about the age of thirteen that I, I wanted to join the army. Um, my cousin was in, and it was a sort of role model thing. And so yeah, I I I, I did a, a couple of months after leaving school before I was my intake joined so I, I went straight in 16 and a half into the military oh um, wow so you yeah, can join at 10. 16 yeah yeah oh wow it's the the age limit here is 18 and i think if you're 17 going on 18 you can sign uh, uh your if your parents sign a waiver you can go in so you can you can actually yeah, join at 16 there so as an apprentice so it's a junior leader you can't you can't go to war until you're 17 okay but it's seven, but so you join you, you join in as a, a junior leader or an apprentice um, oh, okay. as a junior soldier yeah um, and so for me i went to so i came out with only one one qualification out of school because again i i I found that instead of revising and studying for for the exams, it was much more fun to go and hang <laughs> around with my mates. Yeah. So I didn't do too well, but I, I, I joined straight from there and into into Army Apprentice College, which was amazing. It's, they're still going, even though the one that I was originally at got knocked down. Um, but yeah, so so we started, and I, I got a trade, and, and as you said. My, my, you had to sign and my dad wouldn't sign uh, unless I went for a trade. So he says, yeah, you, you have to have a trade. So, so I went in and I got a trade out of it and I did 10 years in the military, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it was, it's just one of those things that becomes part of your life. And I won't say it defines you, but it certainly models in mm-hmm. who you're going to be. Um, and then I came out at 26 um, and started my own football, my first business. Oh, and what, what was the business? So it was IT consultancy. Um, okay. I've been doing electrical, electronic engineering in the military um, and, and then come out, started, went for a couple of interviews for jobs and they just didn't, didn't come to. Um, so I thought, well, I'll tell you what, in for a penny, in for a pound, I'll start my own business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was interesting. I've had I've had many good years for it and and had many other businesses uh, since then. And uh, yeah. Did you did you feel like you were taking a gamble on yourself or did you feel like you were investing in yourself? Because I've heard I've heard different things about starting your own business and, and having it your way. What what was your take on it? So as I was leaving, there was a lad in, 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 that I served with. And as I was leaving, he, 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 it still resonates with me today. And then it's what I tell other people. It's, and he, told me, he said, Lee, when you get out, work for yourself and make yourself rich, not somebody else. And I was like, hmm. And so that's what I did. I, I went out, a couple of job interviews. It, it's It's... One of the problems with people wanting to start their own businesses, this is where it becomes, is they, they think, oh, there's no security in it. There's, it's a gamble. But as you said, actually, it's investing in yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you invest in yourself, you with anything, if you, if you put £10 into a bank account and leave it, it will get interest. Not that much at the moment with the, the whole financial mm-hmm. crisis, but it used to be okay. 
But if you're investing in yourself, you, you, you're actually putting yourself forward and you get a better return on your time for, for, for you doing the work you're doing. And also, people aren't making as much off you. Oh, yeah. You're getting 100% of what you're putting in. I like, I like yeah. how you said that that stuck into your mind because for me, I didn't, growing up, I did not have any kind of, uh, me and my wife call it financial literacy. We had none of that. We had no financial education. We had no idea how to budget, no idea how to manage money. Absolutely none. And I'll, I'll say that all day. We had no idea. And uh, I thought I was doing okay. I, the, the way I managed money, we weren't living paycheck to paycheck. Um, but we did have things we were paying um, on loans, things were on credit. And I started the job that I had at the time. Um, it allowed me to, it was, it, it was one of the best, it, I still work for this company, but it was one of the best roles that I did for the company. And I would have to go on very long drives. Some days I wouldn't go on any drives, but the days that I went on drives, they, they would end up being anywhere from three to six hours out of the day that I would be driving. So after you do so many of those, music kind of gets boring. You know, I've already listened to the song. So I started listening to podcasts and I started, I don't know what I would enjoy. So I started listening to financial books and I started listening to real estate books. And when I started listening to those, I was like, hey, I really like this. I'm not big on reading. My wife really likes uh, sci-fi. We have a whole little library in her house for her. And I have a small section like this big of all the books that I read <laughs> that's in her library. And I decided to buy some financial literacy books. And I started reading that. And I'm like, man, I, I really like I can I can eat these things up. And then that's when I realized, man, I'm getting old because <laughs> these are the types of books that I like. <laughs> and uh, so I started reading those. I was I was listening to all these podcasts for six plus hours a day, sometimes four or five days a week. And that was a common theme like, hey, you're you're working very hard for a business, a business that's making a lot of money. Um, they're probably not paying you what you deserve or you know, the amount of effort that you're putting in for the most part, you know, the hard workers is talking about. Yeah. And, you know, you start thinking about that, like, yeah, you're right. You get money, you spend it. Like you're not holding on to it. You're not buying assets. You're not protecting yourself, your future self. And that's when we kind of turned it all around. We, we paid down a bunch of, a bunch of debt that we had. We closed out all our credit cards and I'd say now we're on a really good track to where we're even now we're modeling that for my daughter. She, she, at every week she gets five dollars, depending on how good her chores were. And a yes. dollar has to go into a charity. It goes into a, a charity envelope for her. And this is off of a, like Dave Ramsey, one of his his payoff debts things. And it goes into that charity uh, envelope and whatever she can spend it on whatever charity she wants. She wants to donate whatever she can use that money for. And then she has her spend where $2 go into that. And then she has a, uh, so her, her charity is the give. She has a spend $2 go into that every week. And then there's another one that's a save and $2 go into that one. And so we're like, okay, you know, we'll keep doing this. And I don't know how many months had passed by um, cause my, my father still gives her $20 every time he sees her. Cause his grandpa, grandpa's here. Let me give you some money <laughs> and birthday money comes across, but she's got 200 and something dollars. And it, it, it had only been a few months and I'm like, wow, you know, this is like, you see it and it's tough. Cause you're, she's like, oh, I'm only getting $5 a week. I want to buy this pencil so I can draw. And she can't, she looks at her money. She's like, I got $3. I got $4 in here. Like I'm never going to be able to spend $25 on this. And when the time finally came around for her to look at it, she's like, well, I think I have enough money to buy this one. So I tell her, let's go look at it. And we look at it. And I was like, well, you forgot about tax. <laughs> so she's like, no taxes. <laughs> and a couple more weeks go by. And uh, so she's like, okay, I have money again. Let's, let's look at it. And now instead of looking at the one that she was looking at, you know, a couple of weeks ago, now she's looking at the ones that she really does want. 
Yeah. And so it's like she, it clicked in her head and I'm looking at it wishing that I could have had that instilled in myself way early because I think it, I think it would have mattered a lot with that. And children, it, they pick up everything the way they're picking things up. That's one of the things they should be picking up now. So, so actually what you've said resonates hugely with me. Um, at school, and, and we, we're taught that if we do well at school, we can, we can get a good job and we can go and work for somebody else. We're not taught anything about mortgages or finances or saving or investing. Mm-hmm. And for me, schools are very objective. Everyone's taught in the same way. But if you don't, so, so if you don't learn that way, you're then told that, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not very clever. You're not, if you've got dyslexia, oh yeah, you're stupid. Or it used to be, it's not as bad as it was, but you, you, if you couldn't read as well as somebody else, oh, you, you were thicky. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you didn't get taught life skills. And as, as you said, is everything we learn, we learn from our parents, our families growing up. So if you've got someone who is like, and, and it's what you've said is, is perfectly true. Um, again, when you start doing things for yourself, and you become more empowered, all of a sudden, your children start taking on what you do. I love the fact that you, she, you, she gives away a, a dollar, and, and I'm a great believer in the more you give, the more you get. Um, I'm, again, do charity work, and, and, and not just money, but time as well, because and the, the term I use is givers gain, because the more you give, the more that comes back. And it, it, it goes through. But as you also what you said was your long drives, you you get bored with music. And I, I used to do the same. I, I'd, I'd go on a drive and I listen to, to audio books or I listen to um, podcasts. And that's how I became financially free, listening to a wealth growth, thinking, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, if I do this, if I take 10% off and save it, 10% for self-development and then live on the 80 oh and then i can i can do all this stuff and it's really nice and interesting that cindy's actually it's i don't think the word's right because i don't think instilled is 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 a right sort of word but she's been shown by good practice by yourself and your wife that if you do this and you save look what you can get um and as you say so I learned about writing a check, not mm-hmm. from school, but my dad. My dad showed me how to write a check. Oh, I yeah. learned about I learned about mortgage and all the bits that go around a mortgage when I had to get one at twenty one, and I, I got one because it was yeah to do well you have to get a house and it's all the you have to do this you have to you have to do well at school to to get a good job to work for somebody else for the next 40 years so you can have a pension that doesn't pay anything like it should do because yeah don't worry because you'll have time to not enjoy the money you've not got (laughs) so but what you said and and the fact that cindy's got that realization and, and and the boys too will also with growing up with that knowledge because yeah. it won't then just be you and your wife doing it. Cindy will be instilling it into the, into the boys as oh, well. Yeah. And, and that is amazing because that's how you become financially free. Yeah. That, so that, it, all, that it all starts somewhere. And, and the whole thing for me, financially free, and I, 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 it's, it's about not having to set the alarm to get up. It's wanting to set the alarm to get up. Oh yeah. Because everyone goes, oh yeah, I've, I've worked with people. And I say, so, so what, what's your dream day like? Well, oh, just sitting on the beach, drinking cocktails. Oh, brilliant. No. And how long could you do that for? Oh, ages. Really? Well, two weeks. Yeah. And then you get bored and you start going in. Yeah. And the realization that actually we should be doing something with our life 
yeah and help for me it's helping other people so all of a sudden you go i don't i don't have to get up i want to get up i don't have to go to work i do the job that i do because i well not a job, i do the the work that i do because i want to help people so it's it's enjoyment for me and i'm giving to other people and helping them get what they want in their life but it, it's really mate and you've had it not shocked me but it, it's really refreshing to, to to hear that you're teaching that to, to, to your children oh yeah i mean i think that's something that's big because like i said we me and my wife we didn't get any of that and we don't we don't hold any kind of resentment because my father my mother didn't know they weren't taught beforehand but like you said you get stuck in that kind of mentality hey go to work you find a good place to work at stay working there and then retire and then now you can you can just do what you want now like after you've worked and had all that time and and it's true you don't you don't think about that a lot one of the cool things about the the giving envelope is you know how you get mail and it's like hey please donate here please give this or or people are asking for money all over social media and whatnot well my wife uh she's homeschooling my daughter at the moment and she ordered a book and the book came in and inside the book was a a hospital saint jude asking for donations and she's like, that's odd that this was inside the book that we ordered. Like, I haven't seen these. They're usually in the mail, not inside the book. And uh, she's like, oh, OK. And my daughter was like, um, can I see it? And, and we're like, yeah. You know, my wife, Betty, she's like, yeah, because we're not going to give anything to this one. And Cindy goes, let me see. I'll give. And she takes the she takes the envelope. And <sighs> what was surprising is that she opened it. And it was a story about a little girl and that's who the money was going to go to. And the story, the little girl's name was Cindy. And so it was, my wife was like, what is this? What's going on? My wife walks into the other room and she's telling me about it. She's like ready to start crying. She's like, oh my gosh, let me tell you the story that just happened right now. And like, that was, that was another one. Like, Hey, yeah, that's exactly, you know, what we're trying to do. Cause if she can pick it up from us and she can keep going on that, then, you know, she's going to, she's going to be a lot better off than we are. And and that's what we want her and the boys to get as they grow up too. Yeah. No, was, listening to, to what you were saying, then I said, the more you give and I'm a great believer in the law of attraction. And some people go, Oh, it's, it's all poppycock or it's not real, but actually it's, if you actually do give out good vibes and, I, I live my life is I treat people how I want to be treated. Mm-hmm. And people say, yeah, yeah, I do that. I treat people how they treat me. And I go, no, no, there's a difference. <laughs> there's, there's a big a difference. difference. Treat people, and uh, I'm very trusting, and and I find that by being that way, I'm very open. I do get um, trying to think of the, a clean way of saying it. and <laughs> I, I, I do get shafted sometimes and i have been in the past because uh, i'm trusting and i i see that i try and see the good in everyone mm-hmm. and, and my wife goes oh yeah but you're too trusting you shouldn't trust people as much i say yeah but if i don't trust them i'll never know that they could be the people that change somebody's life mm-hmm. so it's it's really but no it's, it's the, and the fact that cindy when you said about for me it's the law of attraction and and things happen for a reason the fact that she'd she'd gone on giving before even opening it and mm-hmm. then finding that it hurt her <laughs> name yeah if that's that's a that's really yeah. that's a it really good story unreal Love. i oh, think blimey. i think one thing lee um Man, because yeah, that story, that story was unreal. Like when, when we found out, I was, I was so shocked about it that my, I, my wife, it was hilarious. Cause my wife is all teary eyed in the other room, but I, I like what you said. Cause there's my, my father's a, a, a contractor. He's a painter all his life. And, or at least all my life, he's been a, a painting contractor and he, he works for himself. He's his own business. And he did some work for, I believe it was a preacher and my father is very 
I don't know how he would phrase it or say of himself, but he's very cautious. I would say not very trusting, uh, the type of person that always wants to make sure that everything's double locked, secured, make sure that nobody can touch it. Cause you know, if something can go bad, it will go, it will go bad. It's Murphy's law. And yeah. that's, that's exactly how my sister is. That's exactly how my mother is. Uh, when, when I talk to my family that I spent a lot of time with growing up, like that's how they are. And, and the uneasiness that they have about themselves even with small things, I, I saw how much it agitates them or it affects their life. I, I didn't want that to be brought into myself. So I tried to kind of change that way of thinking for myself. And at times I, I still feel this, now, especially after the military, the, they teach you situational awareness at all times. Yeah. So I still got that, but it's not to the point to where I'm, I'm agitated or I'm thinking about something or cause you can't have it, but he did some work for a preacher and he, I remember this story that he, something had gotten stolen. He put it outside and somebody was supposed to pay him some money or something happened, but these guys stole it from him. And uh, my father was telling me about it. And he had said, he had asked him like, aren't you worried at all about that? And he says, Hey, you know, they stole it. It's on them. I know that at night, I can sleep at night. I don't know if they can or not, but I can tell you that the way I live my life, I can sleep at night. And that makes perfect sense. And, and since then, that's kind of been the little earworm in the back of my mind, even growing up. That was a story that stuck with me because you know what? People tell, tell, tell me stuff like that all the time. Well, aren't you worried if you leave your, your truck unlocked or if you leave your Jeep unlocked that somebody's going to go in and take it? And I'm like, I don't got anything in my Jeep. I leave it unlocked because... Cause I don't want them to tear off the, the cloth fabric on it. So if they, if they want to come in and steal something, they can, but I can, I can sleep at night. If they, if they're going to do that, then okay, then let them sleep at night. I don't know how they sleep, but I think, I think that's one thing too, though. But th I think there's times to be very trusting. And I think it's most of the time that you got to do that. There, I mean, there's certain things I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so trusting on like I would lock my front door at night before the whole family goes to sleep. But, you know, when we're talking about treating other people, how you want to be treated, I think no matter how they treat you too, especially nowadays with people yelling and screaming. I, uh, I was dealing with a customer a couple of months ago who started cursing and yelling and calling me all these awful things. And uh, he would hang up and call back to the office. And it was to the point where like, hey, man, I, I'm going to keep talking to you because I want to I genuinely want to help you. But nobody's paid on commission. So I, I want to help you through this and I want to make it right. I'm not going to let you talk to anybody else in this building because of the way you're talking to me. And I don't want you talking like that to any of my employees here. And so he kind of understood and he settled down a little bit and um, he actually doesn't live too far away from me. And I'm like, sir, I can, I can hand deliver this document to you once I get it. And he kind of settled down like, no, 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 just, just send it, just send it in the mail. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, but, but people, I think people are like that. People don't understand. And they're so self-involved sometimes that it, it really affects their judgment. And I don't think people are seeing how to treat people anymore they're not they're not seeing what it's doing i don't know if it's social media or what what do you what do you do you see that over there where you're at yeah i think it's just a, i think it's global and, and I, I, one of the things so this last week i think facebook whatsapp went went out for a few hours i, I, I personally i didn't notice it so obviously but um but yeah that everyone's going on about it but nowadays it, social media has become for me such a an instant gratification um that people go oh, oh you message them and same with phones that they, they text you and and people there oh you didn't answer me huh? oh no i was doing something or you're not getting it a reply straight away and but, but you haven't oh, have you have i upset you because you haven't got back to me no i haven't looked at my phone um and that's again, it's things. And I remember someone said to me, 
because I, I used to my phone rang I'd answer it straight away and oh, and you become the slave to it this was we're talking 20 years back now and um and his his phone was in his car and it was ringing and I said hey, you're not going to answer it he went no but, but someone's ringing you he says yeah I says, <laughs> but you might miss it he says the mobile phone is for my convenience not theirs if they want me they can leave a message there's got voicemail things even in those days and um, and if i want to speak to him i'll either listen to the voicemail or i'll ring him back but it'll be on my terms not his yeah. and i was like oh my god and that was a, a, a huge revelation for me because I, I i was a slave to the phone but as you said social media's it's become so integrated in life. And again, one of the things that it is, is everyone's got these great bodies. They've got, they don't have, they, they don't have, I was going to say dad tums. I don't have granddad tummies. I'll tell you that. <laughs> the dad bod. Yeah. I'm rocking yeah, with you, those. <laughs> you see all this, but then when you actually see that it's not a real photo and there's a lot of people now that they're, they're taking these photos and they're putting filters on and you don't see the real, real person, which I think is a shame because people are missing out. But yeah, I think social media, it, it's, it's here to stay. We're not going to get rid of it. It's just understanding that it, it's not the real world. And one of the things all of a sudden when Facebook went down and you'd, I've only seen them today, actually, which was quite funny posts saying uh, facebook went down so i went around to my neighbors just to show them what i was having for dinner <laughs> and i was like ah <laughs> but a good one but life changed but think so I, I think about it when the music i listened to as a child or as as, as, as a teenager because as a child my parents used to say oh that's terrible music horrible music and that was in the 80s but then i remember my mom saying that her parents didn't like her music. Mm. And it's just, it's, I think it's the fact that things change. The only, the only constant in, in life is change. And, uh, and it's been able to adapt to change as it comes along. And, and that's what, why we're still around because we do adapt. And we've also got the, the fact that we, we, we learn, but we have fears. So the things that we learn of, as you said, you, d you didn't learn about money until or financial freedom or, or financial well-being mm -hmm. until you're older because you're not taught it. But what we are taught is that if you run too fast, you'll fall over. So don't run too fast and you won't fall over and scrape your knees. And these are the things we learn going through. And, and it's just been able, it's been able to change and adapt. And I always remember in fact, the good old, uh, what was it, uh, high, uh, Highway Ridge, Clint Eastwood, the film, where he goes, adapt, improvise and overcome. Mm -hmm. and, and that became a military, yeah, because that's what we did. But it's, it's not just military. Everyone learns to adapt to things as, the, as they get older. And wh whether that's school, whether it's work, whether it's retirement, we just we just moves on and, and time. I, I learned only a couple of years back, I was very much focused on money. And I realized then that actually I can make money and I've done it. I went through a divorce, lost everything, and I can make it back. What I can't get back is time. Mm -hmm. And that's was spending time with my kids and now spending time with my grandchildren. Is, yeah. Is, is more important than anything and spending time with my wife because to be truthful and it's going to sound morbid we do know where this, we end we do know that there's a stop mm -hmm. but we don't know when it comes and it's oh, yeah. it's when we when we forget that tomorrow's not promised we can fall into the the tumbling thing it's only when you when you, you actually the realization that Actually, every day is a gift. And so I'm not a religious person. I am spiritual, but I'm not religious. But every day is a gift. And every day I wake up and I, 
I say thank you. And being good to people, and one of the things you get, you go and say, good morning. And then, oh, what's so good about it? Well, I woke up. Yeah. Good day. <laughs> if you're going to be grumpy like that, it might get worse, but it's a good yeah. day to start with. <laughs> Yeah. And it's and it's a, it's about how we have it's our attitude we li- we live and what what we give out. So if if you're being positive, positivity comes to you. If you're being negative, everything goes wrong. And I've done that where I've been in a grumpy mood, stubbed my toe, mm-hmm. dropped me dropped me dropped me cup of tea, and you're thinking, oh, what else can go wrong? And then think, oh, I best not say that. I've got yeah. to get in the car in a minute, and knowing my luck, the battery won't start or the car won't start. So. It, it's all these things, but no, it's 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 really hard. But I don't know what what are your thoughts on the social media side. Then do you think it ha- is it is causing? Gosh, I think it, it's hard to because I only have like my perspective on on the thing. So what I'm seeing is kind of the same thing, right? We're so lost in our in our phone. We get so lost in it because now it's it's a it's the computer it's the smartest thing a lot of people have right now the smartest device you can get all the information in the world instantly right at your fingertips just looking straight at it so on one hand yeah it it the internet in itself i still think we're figuring out what it is and what it's evolving to i don't think we could have ever thought that this is what the internet's probably most widely used for right now i'd say as a as a recreational service is social media, uh, games and apps that it's, it's even got, uh, the games are designed to keep you staring at it. And if everybody for, from, from toddler, from babies, toddlers, all the way to the elderly, like they're able to stay looking at the phone and just playing with it. I was hearing something the other day that somebody, they have slot machines, just games you don't win any money but it's just a slot machine and they're they're playing it too and and that was blowing my mind like okay (laughs) that game wouldn't be fun for me but some people you know they like that but i think we're not even allowing our daughter to have a social media just just because we can immediately see the repercussions of of children especially like we talked about hormones they're seeing all these people that aren't real, like you said, the filters that are coming up is one thing. And especially when it's pictures of somebody's body saying like, hey, this is my body. This is how you should be. And that has million likes or whatever it is versus somebody else. And you even see those. I see them a lot. Like, OK, uh, Kim Kardashian gets a million likes. How many likes can this soldier get or how many likes can uh this person yeah. is cancer and it's still, it still doesn't even reach as much as the other one, but people are liking it. And that's even something that's keeping people addicted to their phones. And I, I did something. Um, have you seen the social, I think it's called the social dilemma on Netflix. Um, it goes over Facebook and, and, and Instagram and the social medias and, and how in smaller countries, when you buy a phone, you have to pay for, for other apps you have to pay for the internet but facebook is free and you can get facebook on the phone it's already pre-installed so you get the phone you don't get charged any extra if you're using the internet on facebook so what was happening is the algorithms and youtube facebook instagram no matter what it is if you're looking up cat videos or raccoon videos and it'll just keep showing you that but if you're looking up like, hey, you know, this guy's bad. I don't like him. It'll keep showing you more videos because you're not people just don't like to be happy and look at happy stuff. People like to get angry and the reactions is anger. So the best thing, same thing with news and newspapers that how do they sell newspapers with the headlines? Are you going to buy a newspaper that, that tells you today's the greatest day? Check it out. Or are you going to buy a newspaper that has that headline, like, there's bombs coming, watch out, and that kid's yelling on the newsstand, extra, extra. So I think now that's that's what social media is doing. It, it's giving out the headlines that you're wanting to see, because it's not, it's not just the news. It's not just what's coming up. It's whatever makes you click and get mad and stay on it longer. And these countries that had those phones, they, I think one of them was Venezuela. 
and it erupted into the civil war and it it may not i don't believe that it was the cause of the civil war but i do think you can find a correlation to the way people are reacting and in america i think you can see that too but this is where looking at the other side of the fence people were so angry they're so up in arms about the president or the new president or gun control or abortion laws and and everything that you see on there it's it's so bad that you're like i don't want to go outside but yet we go outside and we go to the market and everybody's fine everybody's smiling everybody's laughing you go to the park kids are playing the sun's out birds are singing and we go to church we go to the market we go to work and and i i see none of that in the community or in the city that i'm in but when you look at tv or social media you see hundreds of people protesting and not to say that what they're protesting is wrong or right but when i go out in the world i'm not seeing that and there 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 i believe there are cases of racism discrimination and where I've been in America, I've felt some of that myself. I've been in those instances. So I can understand why people are fighting for different kinds of rights and women's rights and all these things. I can understand that. But to keep circulating stuff that isn't just happening, that's where it kind of kind of throws me off because I'm not seeing it. And people are saying that it's there. People are telling you, and that's what you're reading and seeing. People are telling you that this is what's out there. But when, when I walk out with my children, that's not there. And I go to various places around San Antonio and San, I'm in, I'm in Texas in America and San Antonio is, I think it's number six or seven for the largest cities in, in America. And wow. everywhere I go, everywhere that I've been, it's, it's, it's not what social media is posting. So that that's where I feel like it's a very scary thing because especially if I have my daughter, my young daughter, or a young boy who's looking at stuff like that, I, I don't think that that's what's actually happening. So when, when you're out and in the community, I, I say this part a lot in a lot of my podcasts. I say it doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who's the head honcho. If there's a piece of trash on the floor in your, in your neighborhood, it doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter who you voted for. It doesn't matter who's fighting a war. Who's going to pick it up? It's not going to change. And that piece of trash is probably not going to get picked up unless you pick it up yourself. And when you do that, you're becoming an asset to your community. You're being part of it. You're helping out. You've just helped out your own community. And I think when, when everybody starts doing that and understanding that one person can't fix everything. One person isn't going to fix your own life. It has to be you. Like you said, you have to invest in yourself because it doesn't matter who's up there. You need to be the one to invest in yourself. And once you start doing that, once you start making that movement, I think there was a book that I was reading and it's uh, you're, you're, you're probably a one and you want to be a 10. You can't just be a one and start hanging out with tens. You have to be a one start hanging out with twos and threes. And when you're two and a three, start hanging around with threes and fours and then make your way up there. And I think, I think that's a good way to look at life too, because you, you're not going to be able to just change the world with what, you, what you're doing now. And if you start trying to be better, trying to better yourself in different ways, you can start climbing that ladder and maturing in different ways. It doesn't always have to be financially. But I hear people complain all the time about trash or who's did this and like, well, have you ever picked up trash in the neighborhood? Have you gone, have you gone out and around? I've been waiting for my daughter to, to mess up somehow so I can take her around the neighborhood and pick up trash. And she, like I said, she's got a heart of gold. No, no reason for her. She never gets in trouble for anything harsh. And um, it was to the point to where I was like, Hey, there's a bunch of trash in this, in this ditch. We're going to go clean it up in her neighborhood. So she's like, okay, let's go. But I, I think it's, I think that's, probably i know it's a long way to go about how i feel about social media and stuff but you know that's i can't i can't take a hard stance one way or the other i i really think the internet's great and it has all these abilities social media i think it's evolving 
and I'm I'm not scared about it, but I am nervous about it too. Yeah, so so you, you, the whole thing you said about the news, I, I totally agree. I've, I've not I've not watched the news actively um, since about 2014, and people go, oh, but what? How do you know if something's going going to happen? I went because somebody will tell me. Oh, well, yeah. what if it's important? Yeah, somebody does tell me. That lots of people <laughs> tell me. Um, yeah. I've got a love hate relationship with. I love to hate the fact that, as you said, all the stories are bad news stories. There's, there's good news doesn't sell papers, mm-hmm. and papers are there to be read so that people can read the adverts, which actually transposes across to the social media, all the algorithms. So I'm, I'm a life and business coach. As far as I'm concerned, every person in the world has heard of Tony Robbins, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. John Dump, John Demartini, and they are life and business coaches because that's all that I get fed. The fact that I go in and I've talked to someone who's not, and I say, have you ever heard of Tony Robbins? And they go, who? Tony Robbins, they say, I've never heard of him. Or Dr. John Demartini, have you heard of him? No. But they're people who are quite influential in, in, in the bits that I look at. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, all I get is a, a feed of there. It's all about the marketing. And what scares me is the Matrix. I look at, think about the Matrix film. I think, oh, how, how, manip- how they can manipulate our lives for it to be that way. And it, it does get you thinking. It's the social acceptance. You now have to, you have to have a, an Instagram account and you have to do this. Well, we never used to. And I, I talk about so, summer holidays we, in, in, the, in the UK, even when I was a, kid, a, a boy, um, the summer holidays six weeks. And as a child, that six weeks was a long time. But because there was no internet, no games or that, You'd, you'd be on your bike, you'd be out riding and mm-hmm. doing all this. I think you're right. I think the internet is an amazing thing. The fact that all the information that you can get hold of is amazing. It's at your fingertips. It's good and it's bad because you then become the slave to whatever you do in Facebook. Or, and it's... It's one of those, for me, it's one of those things, it's, it's an asset and a liability. And the reason, as you say, and actually you've hit the nail on the head, it's, it's, it's got so much good that it can be used for, but then also people use it for bad. Oh, yeah. And, oh, it says, if you get your cat videos, everyone loves cat videos, don't they? The <laughs> cat videos, and all of a sudden, that's all you see. Um, so I, I was away last week as I was, as I was over in Spain. Mm-hmm. I went diving. So I did a quick search, dive site, yeah. Everything on my um, social media things were, were about diving then. I'm like, really? This is, yeah. It's like, oh, I, I like crisps or I, I like, I like chocolate biscuits. And then everything you see is chocolate biscuit orientated. Yeah. And it's the same as our, oh, I can't remember. There's the part of our brain that blocks everything out that's not relevant to us. But if I buy myself a nice car, that's an orange car, I've not seen any orange cars. I buy an orange car and every other car is an orange car because oh, yeah. you've, you've that. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, and, and that's for me, how the social media see, seems my, my perception I'm, I'm i'm not great with perceptions the fact that it's my view on the world mm-hmm. and that's my perception i'm open to other people's perceptions because that's how we need to be because that's how we learn and we grow oh, yeah. so if someone can give me a good example of why it does it the way it does and I'm happy to listen, but yeah, I think you're right. I think it's, for me, it's all about marketing. It's all about 
money and control. And, and yeah. It's going to sound really you conspiracy. Oh, I was going to say, keeping people down. And you're thinking, whoa, but we've all got, doesn't matter where, so how I feel, it's my own personal opinion. It doesn't matter where you come from. If you put the work in, you can you can be whoever you want to be. Oh, yeah. I agree with that 100%. I think, um, man, with with the internet and the way we use it, we can grab so many good things. Like you said, you need to go diving or you're looking for a dive spot open it up and, and do that. Hey, I need to fix a small engine because my, my lawnmower broke. Like, let me look up how to do that. But largely, I do think that what people use it for on the regular is for social media, for addictions to other things, whether it be games, pornography, whatever it is. I think yeah. largely that's what it's used for. And there's so many great things if you have if you think of all the stuff that doesn't like, like I said, it doesn't make headlines, but you think about the doctors that are getting trained in third world countries via the internet. That's yeah. something that, you know, you might've seen a story or two on, but you don't see it every day. Um, the people that are able to, to learn in school, like the internet largely carried the world through the pandemic because we figured out how to do so much remotely but it misses a large portion, I think, of, like you said, going just going outside and riding your bike. Like, that's something people people don't do anymore. But during the pandemic, you'd go into a store, they were sold out of bikes. And so that was, that was nice to see. So it wasn't just in UK then? No. No, I went to try to get myself a new bike and sold out. Sold out for weeks. The, the gym equipment was sold out everywhere for months at a time. It was delayed and it was, you know, people, you're able to buy stuff too online. So that was, that was largely helpful, I think, to everybody. But I do think it's, it's dangerous. I don't know if it, I don't know how dangerous, but like you said, the matrix and kind of that little story there. Yeah. They, they do get you involved to it and, and, there's a line in there that he says um we got everybody so addicted to it and we've even we even tried to make it a paradise but you you wouldn't accept it <laughs> and so he's like that's why you guys need suffering and that that was like that's one of my favorite lines in the movies where he's telling them that and i'm like oh i can i can see that i can see how that would make sense <laughs> yeah yeah and it, as you said it's the little things it's little sentences that the person the, the people who write it think well actually yeah there, there is not any there's not a utopia because as you said the human we, we we need to suffer that's what we're told anyway yeah um and believe i'm not a conspiracy theorist believe me i'm i'm <laughs> not at all but sometimes you think oh i wonder i do wonder so it's it's it is it, i think it can be scary but it's about for, for it's about us taking responsibility for ourselves mm -hmm. and when we take responsibility for ourselves and it's great when when we first started talking you said about you started listening to the audiobooks and and about financials and you took you take a responsibility to actually make a difference in your life but it's not only making a difference in your life, it's making a difference in your children's life. Mm -hmm. But it will also be making a difference in other friends and family because I'll see you doing things and go, first of all, it'd be, what are you doing that for? <laughs> well, that won't work. And then they say, oh, no, you don't want to be doing that. Oh, it seems to be working. Oh, so how is it you do that? <laughs> yeah. And it goes yeah. from a, no, 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 that's, that's silly to... Oh, okay, inquisitive. Can you can you show me? Yeah, that that was yeah. I remember having that conversation with uh, I can't remember who it was, but I remember having the conversation that me and my wife decided, hey, we're we're gonna move into a different house. Um, we're gonna we need some more room, so we decided to move into another house. But at the time, since we were, we were about to go on, we didn't know we were about to be financially, um, <laughs> like. We were financially illiterate at the time, but we didn't know that we were going on to this track and 
literally, literally four more months. We're that's when we started our journey to to be being financially free or on the path to that. And we decided to keep that house that we were leave, leaving and rent it out. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody and they're like, no, I would sell the house. And I'm like, well, you know, the way we can do this is we talk about equity. We talk about rent. We talk about all this cash flow. When we start talking about all these theories, it's like, now, now's not the time to buy you know, the, we don't know who the next president's going to be. We don't know what's going to happen. San Antonio, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I, I wouldn't buy a house right now. And I was like, you know what? I wouldn't buy a house either. I would invest in one. That's what I'm saying that we're going to do. And even then through right, right when we decided to, we're like, okay, we had it. We still had a plan. We weren't just shooting from the hip and we moved into our new home. We put the other home up for uh, rent and then I think it was the week before we put it up for rent, the pandemic came. So nobody wanted to rent out anything. So we're like, all right, let's see where this goes. We can, we can have it for a couple of months and see where it goes. And then sure enough, um, I think it was two months went by. It got rented. The pandemic was still happening. My hours at work got cut in half. And we had, we had somebody renting that was still paying for that mortgage and we were still getting some money off of it. And, we have that now and it's like a blessing to us that we have that. And now through the pandemic, it's, it's shot. All of the properties have gone up. And I think here in Texas, they've gone up anywhere from 20 to 30%. So now that equity, we have 20, 30% more in that equity than, than before. And it's like, okay, you know, that helps you. I think suffering is pretty harsh when you put it in that way. Like, it, you know, meant to be suffering what i've been in a in a big kick for lately is uh suffering but not in a way of suffering um to that degree but doing i think when you do something hard when you when you suffer in a way and for me right now it's uh it's running so i loved running when i was in the army when i was younger but i would jump out of my red beret for the american army is uh you're airborne so you jump out of airplanes so, Yay! Good fun in it. Yeah. So with that, you know, my back's not great. When I got out, I was running maybe 20, 25 miles a week. And I was running maybe six minute mile pace. And I did a half marathon. I did a half marathon in like an hour, 45 minutes. And I got out and instead of running 20 to 25 miles a week, I started running five. And then I started feeling all this pain in my back because I wasn't running nearly as much. And what I did is I had um, I had lost cartilage between my L1 and L4 and L5. And so the, the military didn't want to do an MRI on it because they, they wanted to just do x-rays. Five years later, they finally did an MRI. And then that's when they knew, okay, yeah, you're, you lost cartilage here. That's what's causing your pain. It's going down to your leg. And I've tried to get over that mental hurdle. Uh, that way I can run again. Cause that's the only thing that I really do enjoy when I'm working out. And I've been eating a lot healthier and going on two years now We're on me and my wife are on a keto diet. She's a nurse. So she's, she's helping me along the way tremendously. I can't thank her enough. My, my back pain has gone from a seven every day to like a two. And oh, brilliant. I started, I started thinking about it. Like we, we don't personally, I, I don't do anything tough. I don't do anything to, to make it harder on myself because when you do it, when you're learning something, it's tough, you're struggling, you're reading. Let me read that again. Let me, let me do it again. When you're fixing something and it breaks or you broke apart on it, like, ha, but the next time you do it, you remember, okay, I can't, I can't turn it that hard. I can't put this much into it. I can't do that. I need to do the right amount of mixture. Same thing when you're baking, like you're baking a cake. You're not making the perfect cake the first time. You need somebody there helping you. And lately, my suffering or my my activity that's I, that I've been trying to do is um, to, to kind of stay hard with it is running. And I decided, hey, I'm a 30-year-old dad with a dad bod. I ran a half marathon before I got out of the army seven years ago. And I decided to run a half marathon in December. 
<laughs> so I've been, I've been getting up and, and running a few miles every day and trying to max it out. And I told my wife, like, I don't want to run today. And then I'm very, very hot and cold. And I was like, you know what? I need to run today and I'm going to go run three miles. So I go to run three miles and I'm running, and I'm running. I'm like, you know what? Let me make it four. And so I take a different route and I'm like, you know what? Let me make it five. We'll just do five. And I was like, you know what? I just signed up for the half marathon that day. Let me, let me see if I can do six. So I start doing six and I'm like, you know what? It's going to be a long way back. Let me just keep going this way. And then a rest wing around. I ended up doing eight and a half miles. And this is only after a month of running. And I was like, I think I can make it to 10. And I looked down at my watch and it tells me I have 2% battery left <laughs> right, at my, right at the house. I'm like, ah, oh, no, there's no way I'm going to, I'm going to hit 10 miles without it not counting on my watch. Like I'm going to go home. So I came back home and it's eight and a half miles and I was still walking. I was still pumped. And I was like, man, if my watch didn't die with the battery right now, like I wanted to run 10 miles tonight. And I think the, the, the joy that you feel after doing something hard, especially like, even if it, you're looking at financial freedom, you know, coming up, not, not knowing any of that, learning it, reading it, like it's difficult. And then actually doing it is another thing. And then when you finish with it, the way you feel afterwards, like, okay, this was hard. And, and that old saying, like, if it was easy, everybody be doing it, you know? Yeah. I, I must admit, I do use that saying quite a lot. Um, so, so, yeah, so I agree with every. It's about pushing pushing yourself because it's only when, and it's the whole comfort zone. So run, um, running, I've never really liked it. I did it and I got okay at it. Um, but so in September, or actually in June this year, I thought, right, I'm 51. What haven't I done? I haven't done a triathlon. Let's try and do a triathlon then. So in September, I did my first ever triathlon, um, awesome. and I raised um, raised money for charity, for um, a PTSD charity I, I, I work with. And it was like, ah, oh, I've now booked in for two more next year. But it's it is it is about it's about stepping out of your comfort zone, because it's only when you you push yourself and, and make yourself feel uncomfortable. And as you said, you'll then grow and you won't get anything from not doing it. So, yeah. and, and as you say, and it's one of those things with you, with the running, I know we, I, 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 you go for a run and right. I'm going to do one mile. That's it. I'm going to run for a mile and that's going to be it. So I'll run out half a mile back. And you do that for a bit, and then all of a sudden you get, and it sounds exactly like what you actually. I, th I think I'll just push myself that little bit further, a little bit further. And it's always about pushing yourself that little bit further because if you do that, you'll always grow and you'll always progress. It's when people don't push themselves and they just sit there going, Oh, well, I can't do I can't do that. I'm not suitable to do that. That isn't what I'm about. Well, that's fine. So find something that does change you, does, does change you. So we talk about things. So again, I was, I was airborne as well. Um, uh, airborne. I was also, <laughs> I was also commando trained. The other thing was I'm not great with heights. So what do I do? I learned, I went to learn to fly a plane. Um, I'm now, I've learned to paraglide. Um, so I can now go air, sea, and water. So I, I learned to dive in, when I was 49. Um, and it, it's about everyone to, my, my, my wife said, is there anything you haven't done? I went, <laughs> yeah, it's, bound to, it's bound to be something. Yeah. Um, I ride motorbikes, drive cars, try plane, uh, I dive, I ski. And people go, well, there must be something you haven't done on. <laughs> there's loads i haven't done but i want to do it yeah I, i'd like to i learned to play saxophone um i did a law degree at 42 um and got a master's of law at 47 um and it's it is it's about saying actually 
I'm not, for, and for me, it's the, the words are fulfilled and satisfied. Happy to me is just, a, it's, I, I can be happy by eating a bit of chocolate. Mm -hmm. The problem being is after I've eaten that chocolate, well, I really shouldn't have eaten that chocolate. I'm <laughs> going to get fat again. Whereas if you're fulfilled, it, it's, it's a, a fuller feeling. And you get fulfilled, I feel, by helping people. Mm -hmm. But you get fulfilled by challenging yourself to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And I don't mean by drinking a pint of beer as quick as you can, because <laughs> that's not fair. Um, but the, the things that where you feel uncomfortable. So I, I, felt, I used to feel uncomfortable um, speaking on videos and, and that. Now I do it daily. Yeah. But I, I, I was, in fact, I was, I was speaking to um, one of my clients and he's just starting a business in physical fitness. He's doing, he's a, he, he, was a, he used to run a gym and he's just putting a program together. And he's, he's saying about the videos he has to do. And I says, yeah, my first ever video I'm, I've got on my phone about, and I've still, I've kept them. I literally about 50 tries of, doing 30 seconds of hello um yeah try again try again. and it's really i found it really hard and sometimes i still struggle with it but again if you practice it it doesn't make it perfect because we'll never be perfect but what it does it makes it permanent the more yeah. we practice the better we become and we'll never be perfect because we're all imperfect but by pushing ourselves we allow ourselves to grow and sometimes in ways we don't even think. And, and the fact of having the chance to come on, on, on your podcast has been brilliant because I can feel myself, my confidence growing. And, and that's what it's about. Mm. It's about having confidence in yourself. And so many of us, and I'll say us, we lack confidence in things. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I, I can't do that because, because I've never done it i don't like it well have you ever done it no but well, i don't i won't like it <laughs> and then they go and try it and go oh my god that was amazing parachute parachuting people say oh i don't want to ever never 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 and then they go to a charity one and they go oh my god that was the best thing i've ever done <laughs> skiing oh, I don't, I don't. going down on planks that's dangerous so who's walking across the road um yeah. but yeah and and, and as you said, it's when you actually push yourself, all of a sudden, you actually, you actually get that realization that there's so much more in life. So I'm, I'm 51 oh, now, yeah. 52 in February. I've got so much that I want to do. And a lot of it's about helping other people. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's the fulfillment I get from, from seeing someone prosper. I was, I was talking to a friend last night and he's got a real successful painting de painting business decorating he's got lads working for him and i says it's it's really good I, I enjoy seeing other businesses be successful he says yeah me too and i said but there's so many people that when you say well they, they get defensive and you go well, well why are you defensive yeah, but why would you want me to succeed because we all deserve to succeed in life because everyone want most people want to knock us down yeah People don't want us to succeed, but when we do, all of a sudden, the mindset changes. So as I was saying, oh, you don't want to be doing that. You don't. Want to, oh, when they see you actually doing well, oh, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, can you teach me that? And then all of a sudden, it's their mindset change to being one of negative and no, shouldn't do that. To actually, maybe I can. Yeah. But it's it's really good that you're running again. So so have you done your marathon or you've got you've got it in December? Oh, no, I got it. It's coming up in about 60 days. So I have two months left that I can I can run run my tail off. Um <laughs> I, you know, I like what you're saying there about that because there's there's people that I often see when something comes up that they're not happy that you're succeeding or where I come from growing up in the neighborhood and the family that I have, it's you're only succeeding or that person's only succeeding because they have something special or they got something extra or they got lucky. It's always, I think that's something too, that I've, I've looked inwards to myself to make sure. And I think that 
that helps too that we we give people i say we like everybody we give people these labels and we say that he's only he's only successful at this because he's different or lee's only good at this because he's super smart or brian's really good at that because he's super physical when it comes to like running like he's got stamina or you know so and so can do this just because he's lucky and and when we do that we're telling ourselves that we can't do it i can't do it because i'm not lee that's super smart or I can't run like that because I'm not Brian. Brian used to run and love, he loves running. So that's why he can do it. When the truth is like, that's not the truth at all. Like when I'm, I'm running eight, nine miles or even further than that, it, yeah, I get tired and, and it's hard. I'm sure getting, getting your law degree wasn't easy. I'm sure you had to study so much for that. I'm sure you had to put in work for it and, yeah. and doing that, it's so easy. Somebody gets a brand new truck or a brand new house. Like, oh, it's because of X, Y, and Z. And, and that's already telling ourselves, we, you, you said it earlier too. Like, I can't have that. Like, I don't deserve that. Well, in actuality, like all you need to do is just put in some work. You know, like we're talking about suffering, quote unquote, but, you know, put in some work for it. And you could, cause, cause there's, there's nothing special about me. Like from where I grew up to where I am now, I love talking to people, the job that I have. I talk to so many different people every day that it got to the point to where I was like, you know what? I wish I can have these conversations because even if I'm gone, at least my children and my family can listen to me talk and they know how I think Um, they can have me at any moment because I'll be cemented somewhere. Even if it's not on the internet, it'll be somewhere for them to look back and see how their father thought, how he thinked, how he processed things, what he believed in. And there, there's, there's nothing special about me. I'm not a superhero. I don't have that extra special, you know, space jam juice that Michael Jordan juice. I, I think when we put in the work, and we buckle down whether it's something physical whether it's something financial whether it's something even educational i think we can all do it and i think it it, it's really disappointing when i hear people say that like well he could only do this because of that when I, i mean you can probably speak for yourself on this too where it's like yeah um there's nothing super special about me i just my drive to want to help people i need to do x y and z if i really want to do that and you'll fulfill your purpose too so i I think that's something that that i do see a lot and we sell ourselves short i think everybody does that too often there's no way i can get that because i don't have what he has or i don't have what she has and they, they have that extra you know yeah so actually so what you have to remember for me uh, i started my law degree at 42 and people oh yeah you've done a law degree oh really clever I was, no i came out of school with no qualifications i i i didn't so my my limiting belief was i was not academic so i uh, i got a master's of law blimey how did that happen and the the fact that as you said, oh, he's got there because he's he's been lucky. And I, I do like the phrase of the harder I work, the luckier I get. And it's not about working hard. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a, such a true thing. Yeah. Everyone goes, oh, you're so you're so lucky because you live in that lovely house. Yes, it's got nothing to do with the amount of time. I've spent building up my business so that I can afford the house. I must admit, I'm not a great person for cars. I do like my motorbikes, but cars, I've got an, I've got an old banger. It's it's great. And I get so much stick for it because you've got a business. Why have you got that old banger? And I'm like, because I don't care. I can, I can park it in the car park. People open the doors into it and it doesn't matter. But it's the fact that people look at you and go, Oh, you're so lucky because you've got that. You've got a nice house. You've got nice bikes. You've got, but they don't see 
all the work that's gone into it, the late nights of a good example, the, the chance of coming on OK Dad's podcast. And I'm like, oh, it's a, there's a six hour difference. And you could eat eight o'clock and I'm going, two o'clock? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> because it's it's important. And it's and actually, it's when you value things. If something is valuable to you, you will work into it. So the marathon it's it's something you've set your sights on and i think we've probably got the same sort of mindset is that's your target you have to go and smash that now mm-hmm. you have to go and smash that half marathon and and that's it so all of a sudden that's that's quite high in your value and the thing is our values change daily so you'll start hourly so when you're going for a run your fitness and health are a, a higher value than your your eating or or your 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 um, your work or something like that. But then, as you go into your work, all of a sudden that becomes a higher value. And it, whatever you put as a, a high value at that point in your life or that time of day is the most important thing. And you get that done. And it's about planning to get those things done and spreading it out. And it, it, it is keeping on going. And like I said, the, the fact of having a chance to, we, we, we've talked about it for a couple of weeks and then it was like, right, I've come back from Spain and what can you do tonight? Yeah. Oh, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I might be, a li- I might be a little jaded, but I tell you what, we've, <laughs> it's now half past three now and it's been such a, a lovely experience. It's been great. You get to speak to people. But as I said, it's it's about what you want to do. And there's many people that are happy with having a mediocre life, just getting by. But when you actually step out of that mindset of this is where I have to be because this is where I'm told to be and this is where my family have said I need to be or my friends have said I need to be, when you step out of that, all of a sudden you, you look, look around and go, no, I, I can do this. I, I can do whatever I want. If I want to go and learn to fly a plane, I can go and learn to fly a plane. And it's just the values that you put on become the most important thing for you to do at that time. Oh, and yeah. my law degree, I, I was doing it part time. So I was working a full day and then doing early mornings and late nights for my law degree, master's of law, I was doing 36 hours work-wise. Actually, it was probably about 42, but I I always say it was 36 hours. And then I was doing my master's on top of that. And yeah, it was hard. But because I was working on that, my family life, time with my wife was, was very limited. That's gone by now. And now I get to spend lots of time with my wife she's a photographer uh, so she we've got the studio down down in town but when we're at home we're at home and people go oh that's so lucky you can work from home and <laughs> yeah it is and and it's and again it's about time it's about time and being in control of your destiny and lastly it comes down to being take being able to take responsibility for what you want to do and what you do do because If you don't take responsibility, and I think when you said about picking up the the trash and the garbage, that's rubbish over here. Uh, (laughs) But when when you say about picking up the garbage and and the trash, I do that as you're walking past and you'll see people that don't, they'll walk by. They'll, They'll see someone will fall over and they'll walk by, they'll turn the other way. Oh, no. If I, if I don't look over there, it's not really there. That mm-hmm. bit of garbage that's on the floor. Well, actually, I, I'm not going to pick it up because, oh, I don't know, whatever excuse they make, it's below them. Um, but as you said, and, and actually it, it's when you go and help your community, you're adding value, not just not just to the community, but to you as well. And if you add in value to you, you get more confidence and 
you'll go and do more, you'll, you'll put yourself out. And it's once you start pushing yourself outside the comfort zone, like I said, for, for me, a degree, I was like, I, I'm, I'm no good at learning stuff. Yeah. But when you put yourself outside that comfort zone, all of a sudden it becomes the norm. And you go, oh, I can do this. And you start pushing. And that's, as a, a, a key believe, to, when you go out, you start to grow. And not only do you grow, but the people around you grow. So the whole of the, the community, I wouldn't say it's lifted up because you, you don't lift it up, but it's, it's about everyone helping each other. And the, the bit you said about going and, going and tidying up, this, I think it's brilliant. And I don't think people do enough of it. Yeah. And it's only when yeah. you do, it's, it's laudable because it's, it costs you nothing financially. It costs you t- a bit of time. But look at the the benefits to it. You're not going to have rats and all, all the things for having garbage and trash around. Mm-hmm. Clean it up. But other people think it's it's not their job. Right. And it's only when right. you and, and as you said, you you're going you'll go and clean the ditch. You'll go and pick it up because it doesn't matter whose job it is. It benefits everyone. And yeah. I think that's for me one of the things is. I think people are very selfish. They only think about themselves. Whereas if we were to think about other people more, the world would be a lot better place because if you're, and I said, as, as, as I said before, if you treat people, how you want to be treated, say good morning to people, smile, most contagious thing in the world, even more contagious than COVID, a <laughs> smile. You smile yeah. at someone, they smile back, even, even in London, which yeah. is really rare. <laughs> Um, but all of a sudden, everyone's happier. Everyone's getting on more. Well, I don't think it'll eradicate wars because you'll always have someone who wants more. But it's only when you, you and it's not being, it's also not being satisfied with what you've got and wanting that bit more. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But that gets frowned upon by people who are, uh, oh no, you shouldn't do that. And going back to a friend one of the lads i was saying saying who's starting his, his business chris he was saying his family was shocked when he joined the army because they expected him to come and work in the, the local area and that so he joined the army he he told them he was going to start this business oh what do you want to do that for and they ostracized him and he said well hold it this is this is something that i want to do and It'll yeah. do me good. And, and I'll say, so people don't, well, I think one of the reasons people don't want us to succeed is because when you do, you're holding the mirror up to them saying, look, this is what I'm doing. What are you doing? Yeah. And yeah. it it can be very uncomfortable. But I think that's also the difference for the likes of you and me and Chris and, and all the people who are willing to step out and do that extra bit more of hard work, bit of graft, being more pleasant and friendly and kind to people. Kindness is one of the greatest things that we can do. Um, being empathetic and all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're adding value to other people's lives. And, and that is one of the most fulfilling things. And I've been listening, I must admit, I've not really listened to, to OK Dad. And then I started listening to it and thinking, ah, oh, this is really good. <laughs> so when you'd said about, oh, you're coming on. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. That'd be really nice. So uh, no, it's been, I'll tell you what, it's, it's amazing how, how time flies as well with like-minded people. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been great. Well, it still is great. I'm not, I'm not saying to stop because <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, sorry. I just, no, just got no, into no, the no. zone then. You're perfect. No, I think I think this is this is great. This is one of the the better conversations I've had too. Cause I I love, like I said, I love having conversations with anybody and everybody because there's so many different perspectives out there and we all live differently. We all experience things. So so getting being able to to share that, especially uh, my wife calls it across the pond with, especially with somebody across yeah. the pond over there. Um, I think it's great too. Cause there's stuff that we learn all the time too. different cultures, societies, different views. 
um even even my my, my father uh, he listens to the show too. And he's like, well, I'm always, I'm always wanting to listen to you talk to somebody that's much older than you and seeing what their take is versus your take on things. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm really open to a lot of, a lot of people's perceptions, views and takes. And I, I do pride myself that I'm not just, I, I would say I'm in the, on the fence. I would, I never say I'm on one side or the other, because I think when you do that, I think when you say, yes, this is what I believe all the time. Nothing can change my mind. You're already allowing yourself to not even think anymore. And I think when you do that, it, it kind of, it, it struggles with your growth, your maturity, your learning, and, and it just, it just doesn't work. But Lee, as we kind of close this out, I usually like to end the episode with some fatherly advice. So I usually say, Hey, Lee, at the if you had all the dads listening all the moms listening what would be one final piece of advice you would like to give to them so i was going to say the one i normally use fatherly advice don't eat yellow snow (laughs) but um on a serious note um time is so so precious enjoy every moment of it as i said before we don't know when the next we're not promised tomorrow sing like nobody's listening dance like nobody's watching and hope that nobody's watching you making love because at the end of the day we can we can influence people and help people and time is the one thing that we won't be able to replace so enjoy the time with everyone who is in your life and it doesn't i don't even mean the people that you like even people you don't like because it's 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 going to be so important for somebody else to spend time with you so that that, i suppose that's that's the one my my big giveaway is enjoy the time you've got because it's valuable well said i agree 100 percent lee well I want to say thank you again for coming on. This was great. I thank hope you, you enjoyed me. it. Oh, it's been, it's been, it's, it's been brilliant. And um, actually, you've actually, you've, you've, you've been an inspiration to me as well, because I've been thinking of a podcast and, and I know what it's, I've got the title and, but it's about, I've always, the podcasts I've always sort of listened to have been one person speaking Um. And actually today, it's 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 given me the nudge to step push me out of my comfort zone and think actually I can do it. Have guests on, and and it's it's for veterans. It's oh, it's yeah. ideally for veterans who've got businesses or who want businesses. So um, no, it's I tell you what, it's been an absolute pleasure. And if I'm ever over in Texas, I'll come and have a brew. Oh, definitely, I'll be here. <laughs> Well, you never know. You never know. You never I know. need to get across to the, to the United States at some point. But um, yeah, no, like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on and, and spending your valuable time with me. It's been brilliant and I really appreciate it. And I hope I hope someone, even if it's just one person, gets a bit of inspiration from it. They Then my, my job's done here. Oh, definitely. This, this will, this will get across. I know it'll get across to someone and and getting your insight and sharing it. I, I think it does. I think this, these kinds of conversations help because I think there's a lot of people that are out there that don't, don't have anybody to talk to or, or have these kinds of thoughts or need that extra push and, and need to hear it from somewhere. So I definitely think this is going to help some people out there too, especially with the insight. Cause like I said, people always give labels to somebody else and and then that's the reason why they can't achieve what they are capable of yeah and that you've hit the nail on the head we get labeled for something that somebody else has put on us because i always say about age and i know well you're 51 yeah yeah but it's not real you go what do you mean it's not real i say age is just someone else it's made up same as time it's made up lions don't think it's uh one o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon or two o'clock in the morning they think i'm going to sleep now or i'm going to eat now or i'm going to roar and, yeah. and it's about roaring 
roar in life because if we don't, we're missing out on so much. Definitely. But thoroughly enjoyed it. And you've, you've got my mind going as well. And I, I have to go and get some sleep now because <laughs> it, it, having a face this ugly takes a lot of, uh, lot, a lot of sleep to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to. I definitely want to listen to your podcast, though, Lee. So we got to stay connected well, with each other. Well, I was going to say, as a veteran, I'll probably be getting in you on, and you, you'll probably be early on because you've inspired me in the words and given me a kick up the bum <laughs> to, to to actually get things sorted and get it going. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. So but, I'll, I'll be around, Lee. Though we're going to connect. We're going to stay connected, though. Definitely. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how you're doing that. Are you, in fact, what I will ask is, are you are you raising money for a charity uh, for the marathon? No, I, I think I just paid my dues. There was an option for it, but for some reason I did it. I didn't know. I didn't click on it to see how it worked. And because there was an option to to pay zero dollars and fundraise. But I don't know. I don't know about fundraising and how it would go um, with social media and whatnot. And so I, I didn't, that was something that I was nervous about. I didn't know how, how to partake in that. So, a, bit of, a bit of fatherly advice. <laughs> so for the triathlon, I, I raised money. I paid for my entrance because I didn't want the free, you could do the free. And, and I, I chose a charity that was true to me and close to me that I would I would work with um, and then it was just literally you can do it on Facebook and just say I'm going to raise money for there because people do it now for their birthdays instead of getting birthday cards and presents mm-hmm. can we raise money and and think you, you, you're, you're teaching your daughter to, 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 to raise money for charity lead by example it's oh, a perfect yeah. example, and I'll tell you what I will get. Get me the link, and I'll I'll, I'll donate. There you go. Okay, perfect. You'll There's be an incentive donation. for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first one to donate. Okay, perfect. It'll, it'll only be one cent, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Everything's good, but no, I, I think it, do it, and and I look forward to. So on mine, I did a, a, a before the triathlon. And then a very red head at the end of the triathlon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to catching up and see, seeing how you do. Oh yeah. And at the end of the day, the only person you're competing against is yourself. Yep. One hundred. Yep. One hundred percent. You just got to beat your beat your own mind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll let you get off because I've I've taken up far too much of your precious time. But oh no. Thank you so much for a, an excellent experience. Brilliant podcast and uh, long may it rain. Oh, I appreciate that, Lee. You take care. You get some rest. Okay. Thanks right. very much and see you soon. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Don't mess with that. Just take care. Hello. Never said that. What are you listening to, Asher? That podcast.